Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh kick off just two days from now on Tuesday. The 53-year-old federal appeals court judge sure to face tough questioning as his confirmation battle has become a microcosm of the larger political climate. Garrett Tenney has a preview. Garrett? Well, Jillian, Supreme Court nominees always face tough questions, but these hearings are expected to be particularly brutal because Democrats know this could be their last chance to, blo to block Judge Kavanaugh from the high court. Now, Republicans have a, will have a 51-seat majority, and they are expecting at least a few vulnerable red state Democrats to support Kavanaugh as well. Democrats already failed to delay these hearings, so their new goal is to force the 53-year-old judge to make a mistake and commit a gaffe of some sort in his answers that they can then use to pick off support. Now, on Fox News Sunday, Senator Lindsey Graham said he is confident that won't happen, but he does expect, expect to see political grandstanding by Democrats who are eyeing potential runs in 2020. We're going to have a, a hearing. Uh, there's no drama in this hearing. The only drama is those running for president. How will they handle this uh, hearing on the Democratic side? Uh, you know, we're going to get this good man confirmed. Judge Kavanaugh is expected to face tough questions, and he has spent the past few days going through intense mock hearings known as murder boards to prepare for this, him for the Senate this week. Now, Judge Kavanaugh is expecting those tough questions, and as going through these murder board preparations, Senate sources say Democrats expect to gr Democrats are expected to grill Kavanaugh on his views regarding the separation of powers, voting rights, and about his work in the Bush White House as a top lawyer. More than anything, though, Democrats are expected to focus on Kavanaugh's views of presidential power, which Senator Dick Durbin discussed on Fox News Sunday. There is a serious question as to whether this president, given the opportunity, will end the Mueller investigation. And we ask, of course, to Judge Kavanaugh, what do you think? And he says it's hands off when it comes to a president during his term in office. Uh, I, I think that's a mistake, and it's one of the major reasons people have misgivings about his nomination. Based on the mock hearings over the last few days, administration officials say they are confident Judge Brett Kavanaugh will shine his confirmation hearings this week and be confirmed in time for the Supreme Court's next term, which starts October 1st. Jillian. Thanks for that, Garrett. Here with some analysis is Carrie Severino, Chief Counsel of the Judicial Crisis Network, and Elizabeth Wydra, President of the Constitutional Accountability Center. Ladies, thanks so much for being here. Wonderful to have you. Uh, Carrie, first question is for you. Friday, the White House decides to announce that they're going to withhold about 100,000 pages of documents that comprise a sizable chunk of Kavanaugh's record uh, from his time at the White House. What, what is in these that is so sensitive or so damning that they, the administration has decided to essentially hide them from the American people? Any document review is, has to be done with respect to the president's uh, privileges that are being maintained. And that's true of this nominee and of every, every other one. So uh, it, it's just that when they got to the end of it, we heard which, which pages were being not withheld. But when there's sensitive discussions, in this case, a lot of them, for example, had to do with vetting of judges, et cetera. If they disclose all that, then every other president is going to not be able to speak freely with his own staff. So this is, this is a very typical thing. I think it, this whole, the whole document uh, uh, discussion is in most cards though a distraction. There's a lot of people who've already decided what they want to do with Kavanaugh. This isn't this isn't really the make or break issue. The, the key thing is his 300 plus opinions, his dozen years on the court. That's what's going to tell you what kind of judge he's going to be. I, I agree that fighting over the numbers may be a distraction, but I think the core point here is that, as Senator Durbin and others have pointed out, it's about access to information for the American people when making a decision about the future of the nation is in this case is going to be the happening with this new Supreme Court justice that that should take precedence over everything else. Elizabeth, next question to you on this issue. Mm -hmm. Is it a distraction to you? No. <laughs> well, here's the thing, though. Is this issue energizing the American people? Is this energizing voters in the midterms or are they really care about the issues here? You know, gun control, abortion rights executive privilege. Absolutely. I mean, I think the American people absolutely care about the issues. And when you look at what's at stake in this particular Supreme Court nomination, look, it's a lifetime appointment to the highest court in the land, to the seat that was often the deciding vote in many of these hot button issues that are important to the American people. But the reason why the records issue is not a distraction is the way that the Senate can fulfill its constitutional requirement of advising and giving consent or not on uh, judicial nominees is by getting all this information. And during Brett Kavanaugh's time as staff secretary in the White House, which he himself has called one of the most formative periods in his career, 
We know that there were discussions, we don't know what has been said because we haven't seen the documents, about the war on terror, about whether we should amend the Constitution to preclude LGBTQ Americans from marrying the person they love. Issues about uh, presidential power and whether or not the president is ever going to be held accountable or will be above the law, which goes against fundamental American values. So the two are inextricably linked. So moving from substance to the sort of optic side of this, Carrie, having clerked for justices, you know how important these kinds of hearings are as a sort of public display for the American people, for the senators that are ultimately confirming these justices. Tell me a little bit about Kavanaugh. You know, he seems to be very much of the moment in Washington. He's hugely connected with the Washington establishment, but he has the demeanor and the sort of temperament of a Supreme Court justice. Does that kind of, how much does that count for? Well, I think it's going to be a, a great opportunity to contrast the real Judge Kavanaugh, who is actually very um, thoughtful, articulate, uh, balanced person with the apocalyptic rhetoric we're hearing, uh, as, as Senator Graham mentioned, there's a lot of 2020 hopefuls on the committee, and we've seen people kind of rushing farther and farther to the left to try to position themselves um, rather than talking about the actual record of the nominee. And again, this is someone who we know a lot about already. Uh, we, can, we can quibble over some of the documents, but he, it's almost a half a million pages we have. That's more than the last five Supreme Court nominees combined. It's more documents we've ever well, seen on anyone. Well, but people so will say that that's because he has this considerable history of government service. It's because he's got not, a history of government service. It's because he, he came in, into office in, in those positions after email as well. But it's also because they're, they're, they're falsely inflating some of these numbers. The Democrats have requested documents that even just mention his name, things he never even saw on his own desk. That's something that never was done before. When Elena Kagan was being considered, the Republicans agreed not to even ask for a lot of her documents, including when she was in solicitor, the Solicitor General's office as Solicitor General. That was hugely relevant, hugely probative, but they recognize, I guess maybe a few years ago, we still had a little bit of, of bipartisanship there. Well, That's about President it. Obama. Obama, What's your reaction yeah, President to that? Obama, Elena, Elena Kagan. Yeah, he, President Obama didn't issue, didn't put forth an executive privilege protection for any document from Elena Kagan. And it's not about just, you know, you stack the documents side by side. Brett Kavanaugh, as you said, is a very establishment Washington lawyer. He's been in government for a very long time, and important things happened. So the question is, why are we not getting those documents? Why are we not even getting the documents that Chuck Grassley asked for from the National Archives? They said they couldn't finish their review until October 1st. It was basically, oh, well, that doesn't seem to me the process that the Constitution sets forth when it comes to an important job like the Supreme That's Court. That's back to our point about it's not just numbers here. It's about transparency and accommodating the American people and their right to know about their future Supreme Court justice. Exactly. If he is indeed confirmed. Get it right. Don't rush it through. Thanks so much for joining me. Hope to have you back soon. Great Good to be you. here.